Welcome to the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook for August through November. Over the last 30 days, we've seen very warm temperatures across the West, including the Great Basin. We have had a couple periods of well above normal temperatures or even near record temperatures. Precipitation has also been very dry, especially over northern and western areas, and up until just recently over southern areas. We are seeing our next push of monsoon moisture as we start the early part of August, so these conditions will certainly change, but at least through the month of July, we saw generally below normal precipitation. Since the beginning of the water year, October 1st, you can see obviously areas of above or near normal precipitation that extend anywhere from the Sierra eastward across the northern and eastern half of Nevada into Utah, Arizona, and parts of Idaho. So with the very hot and dry conditions recently in many areas, ERCs have increased significantly over northern and western areas of the Great Basin. The areas in red and purple are ERC percentiles over the 90th or even 97th percentile. So you can see up in central Idaho where we have our large fires currently ongoing across the Great Basin, you can see ERCs are again near or at or above the 97th percentile. Further south over southern areas and into central and eastern Utah, you can see ERCs have come down with recent moisture and these ERCs will continue to decrease over the next couple of days in the early part of August due to the next push of monsoon moisture. We'll even see some modifications to the ERCs over northern areas up in Idaho and over the eastern half of Nevada as this moisture continues pushing north through the first several days in August. The only areas that may remain untouched by much of this moisture will be parts of northwest and western Nevada into the Sierra. So looking at some of our fuel moistures, our 10 hour fuel moistures obviously very low over western areas that have been out of this moisture for quite some time and certainly higher over areas of Arizona into southern and eastern Utah that have already seen some of the monsoon moisture get pushed north. We're seeing a similar trend on the 100 hour fuel moisture and also on the thousands as well. Looking at our soil moistures, soil moisture has certainly come down as the snow melt has nearly concluded across all areas except in the highest elevations. And we have seen these hotter, drier conditions that's really dried out our fuel situation. So still some elevated soil moistures over parts of Western Nevada, even over parts of Idaho, Wyoming, and Northern Utah. But in any case, these are certainly on the downward trend. Looking at our drought monitor, we have pretty much lost all of our drought across the Great Basin with the exception of parts of southern Nevada into south central Utah, where there still is some moderate to severe drought, the longer term drought that's ongoing. Again, all other areas with the winter and spring precipitation have been removed from drought. Looking at the drought outlook, you can see these areas in southern areas of the Great Basin will likely continue with the current drought they have ongoing. We also may see a drought development likely over parts of eastern and southern Utah just due to the lack of monsoon moisture. Currently we are getting some monsoon moisture early in the month and we may see some additional moisture towards the middle of the month but certainly our monsoon moisture is weaker than it would normally be this time of year so again we could see some drought redevelopment in those areas. And this is showing more shorter term drought changes over the last week, just with the hot and dry conditions. And this is more an indicator of flash drought. You can see up in Idaho where we have some of our large fires, we've really seen conditions dry out. And even over Western Nevada and into the Sierra where conditions have been on the dry side, we've seen even though there's no drought on the long term drought monitor, short term we are seeing some possible implications that the fuels might show signs of some drought until they get some moisture. So again, that um, in areas where we have fire activity in central Idaho is still most concerning. And now just looking at just our overall pattern for the three states here for the Great Basin, you can see in areas in the black boxes are, er are years that we see our high number of acres burned. This is for Nevada, and this is over the last 22 years or so. And you can see these all coincide with areas where we do not have drought or we're either coming out of or going into drought. And now this year where we are coming out of drought, we will see an uptick in fire activity, but just due to the late start of the season and likely the shorter season we'll see, we might not see a large number of acres burned in Nevada. That just remains to be seen at this time. Um, but our season certainly could go longer than it normally does, just with the dryness we're seeing in August and possibly even heading into September. So that will be something to monitor. Even with the late start, we could go a little bit longer in the season. But there's plenty of potential with the fine fuel growth just due to the 
lack of drought and the precipitation we've seen recently. And if it does not show an impact for us this year, it certainly will likely be impacting us next year. We're seeing similar conditions for Utah. Again, it's the years that we either don't have drought or we're either entering or exiting drought that we tend to burn the most acreage. And again, this is our lower elevation BLM lands that um, are mainly driven by fine fuel growth. And Idaho, very similar patterns. So kind of putting everything together, we'll look quickly at La Nina and El Nino. We have been in a state of La Nina for the last few years and temperatures in the oceans have been warming. So we're now entering this weaker version of El Nino and likely looking at most of the models, they will be trending warmer going through the next several months into the early fall before decreasing again. So we'll likely stay in El Nino this year, which will certainly have some implications heading into the winter. So the 8 to 14 day outlook, the shorter term outlook for August 8th through the 14th does show cooler and wetter conditions over northern areas of the Great Basin. That kind of remains to be seen how much moisture will move into that area, but we'll be watching that. But it's also showing the warmer, drier conditions down south where the monsoon would be still fairly active at this time. So again, with the late start to the monsoon and the weaker monsoon that we've been expecting for the last few months, it does look like it will continue through August. So again, we'll be watching some areas down south for drying conditions as we head towards the middle of the month and possibly an increase again in fire potential. Looking at our forecast here for the next four months issued by Predictive Services, you can see for August, really August all the way through November, we're looking at generally warm temperatures for the Great Basin. So we'll focus on the lower row, the precipitation. So going into August, showing still above normal precipitation potential for the northern and possibly even western side of the Great Basin with that drier signature for Utah and Arizona in the areas of the monsoon moisture. So again, we'll be watching, especially mid to late month, for the development of this weather, wet weather pattern up north and possibly into western areas of the Great Basin. As we move into September, we could see those wetter conditions spread further east and possibly even see some drier conditions up north. So again, mentioning that we did have a late start to the season, but also that potential for especially the northern half of the region to go a little bit longer with fire season into September. That potential is still there and we are monitoring that. As we move into October and November, the more of a drying signature up north and more of a wetting signature developing down south. And this is likely due to the influence of El Nino developing and continuing during these months. So that would tend to trend towards wetter conditions over the southern tier of the US, which again is what's indicated here for November. So putting everything together, looking at our Great Basin outlook, for August, uh, the only major change we made was to extend the above normal fire potential um, that was just in southern and southwest Idaho, a little bit further north to include central Idaho. Again, with these drier conditions, even though we will see some moisture moving in in early August, uh, we'll see if those wetter conditions really develop later in the month. Until then, uh, with ERCs as high as they are and, and fuels drying as much as they are, again, this is our main focus for above normal fire potential. With the monsoon moisture moving in from the south, that will dampen things over southern and eastern areas of the Great Basin early in the month. Again, there is some potential for these conditions to dry out, but likely still only bring our fire potential to what would be normal for this time of year. September, very similar conditions continue. Again, we are continuing that above normal fire potential, showing that the season might go a little bit longer for western and northern areas. And then by October and November, just a general trend back towards normal, which would be decreasing fire activity. So here's a little look at the national outlook for August through November. Again, you can see the Great Basin also ties into above normal for August for much of the Pacific Northwest into the Northern Rockies. Similar conditions for September, although maybe the eastern part of Montana shaved off of that above normal, but again, still looking at high fire potential in the Northwest tier of the country. And then as we move into October, November, the above normal certainly dwindles and we start returning to normal across most areas. That concludes our webcast for this month. Please check back next month for updates to the seasonal forecast.